this last guard that I tried was just a piece of old um, PVC pipe that I used a heat gun to soften and then wrapped around it. And it held up pretty well, but a crushing blow ended its life. Uh, let's jump right in and replace it. This time I'm going to try to use some nylon rope and I'm going to soak it in epoxy. Um, I'm familiar with some of the alternatives and I've considered them, you know, like bicycle tube, rawhide, there's a bunch of ideas floating around, but I'm going to try this because I have it on hand and it should only take a couple minutes. I'm in the process of filming a couple hatchet restores. But at the moment, Matt and I are doing all the heavy log splitting. And I just can't afford to have his handle go bad. Because the oncoming cold is brutal and I don't have much time to prepare. I just moved here and I don't think I have enough firewood for the winter. So I'm kind of in a mad rush to split as much of it as I can. I might be willing to try something a bit more experimental some other time, but I'm going to have to split wood again tomorrow morning, so <laughs> I need to get going. I'm hoping the epoxy will help to repair this chewed up spot here too. Well, I want to paint some epoxy on the handle first, but I'm just doing a dry run here. This piece is about eight feet long. I have another five footer. I don't think I have enough in a single piece. I may have to join them together. I wish I had a single piece that would make it, but this is to be strictly utility, so I guess I will. I'll attempt to join two pieces together. They aren't even the same type. That's okay. Normally, when you're using this type of rope, I would recommend always burning the ends because it frays so easily. But in this case, I want to fray it because I want to join these together. So I will break this weave apart a little bit and then cut half of the rope away from one strand and half of the rope away from the other strand, join them together with a drop of epoxy and wait till the epoxy's like waxy hard and I'll twist it all together. Now, the, the, the idea behind using the rope is, at least in part, to keep the handle in compression. If the wood in the handle is in compression, it will be stronger. But once this rope has been covered in epoxy, the fact that there's a joint in the rope will matter very little. Another nice thing about using this type of rope is that it's got a softness to it, so it should smash a good bit on impact and absorb a lot of the blow. When you're working with this five minute set epoxy, and it's only like three bucks for a tube like I use, a good tip is to use denatured alcohol to get it off of your skin or to clean it up. It works surprisingly well. It's starting to firm up a little bit. It's been about five minutes. So I'll start to twist it together. Now, nylon rope does have, it has, a, it has thermoplastic qualities. So I could just melt it together with a lighter. But the point here is to saturate the fibers as much as I can with epoxy. That's the ultimate goal, to make this strong for the purpose that I'm using it for. Okay, it's still not quite 
ready yet. I'll give it another five minutes. I know they call it five minute epoxy, but that's nonsense. Uh, okay, I'll clean up my fingers with denatured alcohol. There it is. Now it feels kind of like used bubble gum. And that should be good. Now I'll just let it set for, I don't know, about 10 minutes and then I will start my project. Okay, am I ready? No, not really, but let's get started. This is a silicone basting brush and this is a silicone bowl. I picked up some plain shavings off of the ground over there and I was thinking about wrapping this bandage with some epoxy first in preparation but I, I just don't want to play around I just want to get started I was also thinking about emptying an entire tube of epoxy right into this thing and then just you know shoving the rope into it and sloshing it around but then I thought even though that would be great for you because it would be entertaining to watch, it would make a mess. And I don't think I would be able to operate the camera at the same time. I'd have epoxy everywhere. So instead, I'm going to put epoxy on the handle, then wrap the rope on, then put more epoxy on the rope. This will prep the surface for sure because it will make a nice place for the rope to bond and not slide around but also it will help to stabilize some of these loose wood fibers epoxy is crazy tough stuff a lot gets wasted in the bristles of the basting brush but it's worth it it's pretty convenient Now, I have to patiently wait, but I can work on plenty of other things while I'm doing this. It's a multi-step process working with epoxy. You just give it a couple minutes, go to something else, and then come back. Because that has to be perfect to peel all of it out of the bristles. It, it'll take about 15 minutes and then I can start to peel that away. Also, I want to make a, a better, a more efficient tool. There's a lot of waste in there by using this. So this is the top that was cut off from this mixing beaker. I got it for a dollar at a dollar store. But I'm going to make a type of scraper, a, a, a spatula type tool. I think this will work much better. We often take for granted just how lucky we are to have access to silicone. Imagine the early pioneers and settlers, they had to mix their epoxy in a lead pot <laughs> or ceramic. Less waste and definitely faster, but probably a bit messier too. It's still wet, but I'm just going to set this here to give it a good grab so that I can pull on it real nice and tight. Now I will wait. All right, I'm not waiting as long this time, but the rope is nice and secure now. But it's still a bit tacky. It's sticky. 
focus. But I was still able to get it out of my mixing thing. And this cleaned up really a lot easier. Okay, so I'm going to stand it on edge now and then put another coat on and start the wrap. There we go. I got it to stand upright by using a sandbag. I'm going to drip it down the front. This side is still sticky, but this side is starting to feel smooth. I've been trying to get it all over everything that I just did, but really thin. I'm keeping it nice and tight. Remember what I said about keeping it in compression. Whoa. There's my seam. And it's going to land right on the flat. And maybe I'll sand it down if it sticks up at all. I don't want something that's going to give me a blister. I didn't really think through how I'm going to end this. I'll figure something out. Okay, well, that worked out great. It starts to get sticky as you go along so it really starts to grab the rope and by the time you get to the end it really holds it nicely. Well I definitely like how it feels. Um, it feels really tough. I'm thinking that maybe I don't want to drizzle epoxy over it. I may just put some on the end a little bit more on this joint so that I can sand it down and maybe right here at the beginning. I don't really see a need for more. These three remaining spots are small enough that I can get them with a toothpick. But this side has no flaws on it. It is now the following day, and I'd like to show you something. Before I forget to mention, I went around the perimeter just to seal it nice, and hopefully that'll make the transition less aggressive on my hand. But this is what I wanted to point out. I was sanding that down, and it does come off, it comes down rather nicely. But the problem is, if you look really close, you can see that it turns out that it's not so abrasion resistant. If it's not abrasion resistant, then it's not going to resist abrasion. So I think I'm going to actually end up using more epoxy. I figure I may as well, considering that once it starts to tear as I use it, or become frayed, then I'm going to end up putting epoxy on it anyway. So I might as well just do it right from the start. As with any project, the only thing that's ever certain is uncertainty. But that isn't a problem as long as we can adapt 
when new information comes in. Let's give Spatula 2.0 a try. That was really cool. It soaked it right in and it didn't move at all. It was really easy to spread, but it's going to take a couple sessions to finish it. Wow. Hard as a rock. That is cool but it's still rough on the hands on the back side. I put it on extra thick right here on the front because this is where it's going to have to endure impact. But on the back side, I was a little more thrifty and it, it's really rough. I'm going to have to knock these high spots down. Hey, at least this gives me an excuse to put off splitting firewood for one more day because it is pouring rain outside. Okay, that feels great. I could leave it there, but I'm going to put a little more epoxy on it. I came this far. Uh, just to get it nice and smooth looking. You don't really want to see more epoxy footage, do you? Okay, but just a quick clip. After all that experimentation, I found that this piece of twisted copper wire ends up being the best tool for the job. Another tip is to mix the epoxy in the side of the beaker like this and not on the bottom. That way you lose less in waste. One more thing. I used a grand total of about maybe two ounces of epoxy on this entire project. So it might be more cost efficient to get one of those regular dispensers instead of one of these. You definitely want to use gravity to your advantage. It is a sunny and cold November morning and I can no longer put off splitting firewood. I'm very pleased. I expect it to hold up nicely uh, I guess you'll have to check back to see how well it held up over time. I expect to be able to get lots of use out of it. Hardened epoxy like this is tough stuff. It will take a lot of abuse. One of the cool things about this process is that you can take it as far as you want. You can make it as smooth and as pretty as you have time and patience for. I took it to a degree that I felt was reasonable anymore and it would have became a bit of tool worship and I'm not into that sort of thing. So naturally because this was about axes we have to have the obligatory wood splitting shot. Of course if that sort of thing bores you you can be on your way and click one of the links that you see on the screen right now and watch another video. And, oh, by the way, notice that I didn't just pick an easy one just to show off my skills. I picked one that had knots intentionally. Because with, realistically, with splitting wood, not every hit is a win. Ooh, first blow. I'll give you a close-up. It definitely scuffed it, and a couple more blows like that and you might knock a chunk loose. Hey, I hope you enjoyed this. I'll see you later. Ooh. Ooh. Here's what it looks like to split an easy log. It is a sunny and cold, wow, a bit too cold. <laughs>